Eh, hola, ¿qué tal? Hoy me van a entrevistar para una tarea escolar. Siempre es por estas fechas, al inicio de, de febrero, siempre me llega un correíto y me piden que si les puedo dar una entrevista. A mí se me hace que como di una hace muchos años, este, cada año... En estas fechas siempre me cae un grupito de estudiantes de universidad para hacerme la entrevista siempre, güey. Entonces, esta ya va a ser el tercer año consecutivo que hago esta misma entrevista de a DBA, ¿no? Este, pero bueno. Eh, y pues es algo que hago porque me gusta ayudar a la gente que pues está atrás de mí, los más jóvenes que están estudiando tal vez esto. Y aunque sé que la mayoría no va a dedicarse a bases de datos, pero pues si a, algún, si a alguno le interesa ganarse la vida haciendo esto, pues este pues qué bueno que puedo ayudarlos, ¿no? Entonces, porque pues a mí, pues yo no tuve ningún... este <ríe> Yo he sido autodidacta y los únicos maestros que tuve realmente han sido autores de cursos en Udemy, en linda.com, ¿no? Luego se volvió LinkedIn y eso, entonces... Pero realmente nunca tuve a alguien que, que me enseñara cómo era el oficio, ¿no? De desarrollo de software, en especial bases de datos. Tuve que aprender por mi cuenta, ¿no? Eh, y ya pronto, me, y, y ya una vez que me metí a trabajar de esto, pues me di cuenta que es difícil desarrollar software de por sí, es difícil desarrollar software y hacerlo bien de forma competente. Ya no digo, porque yo no me considero así como que wow, la eminencia. Este, yo siempre he aspirado a, a ser competente, ¿no? Y cumplir y ya. Pero hasta eso yo creo que es difícil, ¿eh? Entonces, este, o sea, cumplir con, con los estándares básicos de calidad es, es difícil. Y más cuando es bases de datos, ¿no? Porque, pues, no nada más es lógica de un programita o que se vea bien un software, ¿no? Es, los datos, pues, son primordiales, ¿no? Entonces, este, pero pues sí, entonces, bases de datos yo creo que es algo así como que de todo programador, no importa a qué te dediques de desarrollo de software, eventualmente tienes que tocar, ¿no? Aprender a guardar datos en una base de datos relacional. Y pues ha estado desde, desde antes de que yo naciera, ya se estaban utilizando, ¿no? Entonces, pues es nada más de forma natural, yo creo que este que se, que se sigan utilizando, ¿no? Es, SQL es una de esas habilidades que nunca pasa de nunca pasa de moda, ¿no? El Don Cacho, hola, ¿qué tal? Oye, sí es cierto, se me olvidó el chat. Siempre se me olvida el chat, bro. Entonces, pues, me contactaron ayer y dije, ah, sí, va. Y ya este va a ser el tercer año consecutivo que estoy haciendo esta misma entrevista para diferentes alumnos, obvio. Ya, ya, ya. Y, y siempre grabo esto, güey. Siempre grabo esta... A ver. Ahí está. ¿Eh? Ahí está, ya, ya tengo chat. Ándale. Ahí está, ya, mira. Eh, lo que tiene de especial en esta edición, podría decirse, a ver, vamos a poner el avatar, porque sí, porque no, güey. No sé si quieren que ponga cámara. Si quieren que ponga cámara, este probablemente voy a tener que quitar el avatar. Porque el avatar usa la cámara, la webcam. Pero pues ya veremos sobre la marcha, a ver qué tal. <risa> Pero sí, yo cuando era joven nunca tuve un sensei que me enseñara desarrollo de software, programación ni base de datos, nada, güey. Yo tuve que ser autodidacta. Este, y había gente que con la que yo trabajaba que yo decía, bueno, ¿y por qué no me enseñan o me hacen como un mentor, una mentoría, algo así, no? No, ya luego descubrí que eh, el nivel de, o sea, sí sabían, ¿no? Pero haz de cuenta que aprendían a programar, pero se saltaban muchas cosas. Como que su conocimiento se limitaba a que la chingadera jale y aunque sea un desmadre, pero que dé el gatazo ahí, ¿no? Lo cual hacía muy difícil hacerle cambios al software, por lo tanto, convencer a esa gente de que le mejorara su sistema estaba cabrón, ¿no? Entonces, este, o sea, mucho código espagueti, nada organizado, no había documentación, ni saben qué es eso, ¿no? Entonces ahí fue donde me di cuenta, no, o sea, estos sí se dedican a eso, pero como que lo hacen al chingadazo, pues, ¿no? 
Y ya fue cuando a mí me surgió la necesidad de, ¿sabes qué? Este, yo quiero aprender a hacer esto de sistemas, ¿no? De hacer un sistema que guarde datos en una base de datos, que tenga una interfaz gráfica. Y pues ya tuve que ser autodidacta y empezar a aprender yo. Eh, por mí mismo, en el sentido de que me empecé a buscar en internet libros inicialmente. Este, y me acuerdo que encontré uno en, en internet que, había, que acababa de salir por esos años, creo. Que se llamaba la Manga Guide to Databases. Ándales este. No sé si... Y es un, es un manga que salió en el 2008, me parece, 2010. Ajá, mira, creo que aquí lo puedo ver. A ver. Y no soy un robot. Y ahorita comerciales. Así de... de, de apuesta en caliente.com. ¿Qué onda? What the fuck? No, creo que no está aquí. Bueno, no importa. No, aquí está en Amazon, pero... Ya es un libro viejito. Salió en el 2009, fíjate. Yo empecé a trabajar en el 2008. Eh, entonces pasé un año trabajando eh, en bases de datos y, y haciendo sistemas. Y nadie me enseñó. Ah, van a querer. A ver. Uh, my name is Oscar. Um, this is my companions. Um, oh, hello. Presence. Good morning. Morning, guys. How you doing today? Um, uh, Juan Jimenez Rivas. Mm -hmm. My name hello. is Desi. Hello, my name is Jonathan. Uh, thank you for the interview. Nice to meet you guys. How you doing today? I'm trying to figure out how to turn on my webcam, but just give me a minute. Oh, it's blog. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, so I guess this is like um, an interview to a DBA, a database admin. Yeah. Or yeah. So I I think Leslie sent me an email with a very short notice about this, and uh, but I don't really know what uh, uh, what uh, is this an interview or what is it? I don't really know. So maybe you can give me some context. It's Hello. For the, mm -hmm. It's for the uh, task in the in the. Um, um, well, uh, the school is a task and um, do an interview uh, one person uh, to uh, work in a DBA. Oh, yeah. Uh, actually, I'm getting these interviews around this time in February. So this is going to be like my 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 third interview. So I don't know is uh, uh, it's from the same school, I don't know, <laughs> uh, but I am happy to help, you know, the younger generation to catch up on what to do and what not to do, as a DBA, I mean. So, uh, what questions, uh, so I'm ready to answer your questions, you are ready to start, of course, so I don't know. Uh, What is your name? Well, my name is uh, Jorge Ricardo Escobar Carrasco. And uh, I've been working as a software developer for like uh, 16 years already. And currently I'm working as a, I'm not a DBA anymore. Uh, that was one of my first jobs. But right now I am something called a data quality engineer. 
which basically is an engineer that verifies that the data is accurate, uh, is fresh, and it doesn't contain errors. Uh, so that's basically the job to do. And I, my, us, my users are basically um, business intelligence users and data analysts. So those are my users. And I myself, I am a, a user for data, en data engineers and I believe um, and DevOps engineers. So that's basically like uh, uh, the structure of the team. Uh, but uh, being a, a database admin is uh, one of the jobs I used to do um, a long time ago. So I've been, I've been, uh, uh, I've been changing um, job descriptions and whatnot, but uh, but uh, I, I think I already know what to do as a DBA. So, do you guys have like uh, experience in databases or or being a DBA or what do you do? Or what do you understand that a DBA is? How old are you? <laughs> uh, si quieren, me pueden hacer un, preguntas en español. No hay problema, eh. <laughs> Y les contesto en inglés o no sé. Es que en sí le tenemos que preguntar las preguntas en inglés y que nos conteste en inglés porque si no el profesor no nos regresa el trabajo. Ah, ya, ya, ya. Ok, perfecto, perfecto. No se preocupe. Sí. <risa> Ok, pues hagan las preguntas y pues se las contesto, no sé. No sé si las tengan ya escritas o, o qué será. Sí, sí, ya las tenemos escritas. Ah, ok, ok. Si quiere, pues empezamos otra vez de nuevo. <risa> ok. <risa> no, así también yo digo que pues, lo podemos cortar, ¿no? ¿Cómo ven? Pues sí, o empezamos con las preguntas directo y ya, ya tienen, no sé si están grabando video, me imagino que sí. Sí, con la que empezamos fue la de tu nombre. Ah, ya, ya. A ver, otra vez si quieren, empezamos otra vez y digo mi nombre y ya me hacen otra. Va que va. Bueno, ahí me dicen. Sí, es que están preparando para grabar porque están guardando el video. Ah, ya, ya, ok. No sé por qué no puedo utilizar mi camarita web. Eh, igual yo, no sé si el OBS lo está ocupando, pero bueno. Anyway, ¿y qué onda? ¿Qué, ¿Qué onda que lo quieren en inglés? Está bien, no hay problema. También como que tengo que hacer mis respuestas breves, ¿no? Para que no les dé mucha lata de editar y eso. <risa> Yo, yo haciendo la buena obra del día Ya se me acabó el café wey. Hubiera ido por café antes de
Sí, quién sabe cómo cómo le tengo que hacer aquí para que se vea la camarita, ni idea, eh. Ah, mira, está mal. La cámara falló. Dice que está desactivada. Ah, pues quién sabe. Okay. Um, hello, good morning. Thank you very much for accepting this interview and giving us uh, a few minutes of your time. Yeah, sure. Oh, the webcam is working now. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. So, um, what are your questions? See if I can answer them. Um, let's start with the questions. Mm -hmm. What is your name? Uh, well, good morning, everybody. My name is Jorge Escobar, uh, and I'm working currently for an American company in databases related issues, I think. Um, I am a data quality engineer, but I've been working as a DBA for quite some time, too. Yeah, my name is Jorge Escobar. Nice to meet you all. How old are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I do have a lot of work, but uh, I've been working from home for quite some time now. So uh, I'm doing great, you know, working from home. So, yeah. Me, what company do you work for? Oh yeah, I'm working for uh, a clothing company in America called Carhartt. Uh, is let me type it for you, Carhartt. So you can uh, you can uh, do some research on it. Uh, they they make clothes for hardworking people which is basically um, they do uniforms for uh, firemen, nurses, doctors, and um, mechanics and, and such thing, and farmers, for example. So uh, they are a clothing company. Um, I believe they are like um, one, la, they just made like uh, 115 years, I think. Um, they, they are a pretty old company, uh, and I've been working for them for like a year already. Yeah. Uh, well, what is your professional page? Uh, my professional, uh, come again. Okay. What is your professional Kairish? Uh, my professional Kairish? What do you mean by that? Uh, I, I didn't understand that last part. It's a career. Oh, career. Well, um, I was studying uh, what we call here in Mexico, Ingeniería en Sistemas, or uh, Systems Engineering. Uh, back in 2008, I was doing like uh, my Servicio Social, or what the Americas would call like the internship. Uh, but, um, I think my uh, the people that were I was working for, they offered me a position there. So uh, I I am actually a, a dropout. So I didn't finish my studies, and I just began working there. 
uh, I began working for a bank and then I went to another bank uh, working in databases as a DBA and then I moved up into um, uh, gov local government here in my local city uh, doing database work and developing um, database applications yeah so I did a study um, college for like uh, close to four years but I am actually a dropout so I didn't graduate yeah I hope you do, actually. <laughs> How did you get to the position and the place where you are now? Uh, well, that's a funny story because, um, as I mentioned before, uh, I began doing my uh, service social, my internship for a bank. Uh, I think it was called Banorte back in the day. And um, I began doing uh, like coffee and stuff, but then I, um, the uh, my boss there, uh, he saw me um, reading books about programming and doing the stuff on my own laptop. So he asked me to do uh, a little project for him. Uh, he actually told me that I should learn how to develop. Um, I should learn SQL, and I should learn something called Delphi which is an IDE and, and a programming language. It's, uh, I don't use it anymore. Um, but uh, I began learning Delphi and SQL way back in the day, like I'm talking like uh, 2008 to 2010. So that's more, uh, that's like uh, 15 years ago. And then when I learned how to do um, basic uh, database work with SQL and and an ID and a graphical user interface with Delphi, uh, then this guy, this my boss, told me that you know what, uh, you're doing great work. Uh, what do you think that we just hire you? You know, uh, you're already working for us. You're already making systems and. Uh, uh, and after six months, because uh, Servicio Social only lasts for six months, then when my six months were done, um, he basically just told me, you know what, uh, we can just hire you, don't go back to school, and you can begin working here, you know, and, and that's how I got my first job, you know. Uh, and I began earning my money, and after uh, that job was done, um, uh, after the first job uh, I did was done, I went to another bank with the same boss because he changed uh, from bank to bank, and then I followed him to my um, to uh, to local government, and then I lost contact with him, and I just uh, went to work for another bank. You know, uh, the last two banks I was working for was um, BBOBA. Uh, I, uh, BBOBA is a Spanish bank that uh, they do have presence here in Mexico and another bank called Volkswagen Financial Services uh, uh, they belong to the Volkswagen company that uh, they do cars, they, they make cars uh, but they do have their own bank that they use to like uh, 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 make loans to big companies that they need to like uh, uh, if for example Bimbo wants to have like a a fleet of of, um, of, uh, of cars to deliver the products to whatever they need you know so they ask for a loan and um, I was working there in the bank you know um, which is very funny because in Volkswagen uh, they, a they ask everybody working for the bank to have um a bachelor's degree uh, that's like a, a bachelor's degree for the uh, for the Americans is basically like a licenciatura you know uh, having a, a, <laughs> a bachelor's degree is basically your tu titulo if you don't have that in Mexico uh, you are not allowed to work there but uh, they made a section for me because I already had like a, a lot of experience and I was doing work for them uh, and that was uh, how how I got another job, like having experience already and having projects under my belt, you know, like uh, uh, you can just like show, uh, you know what, I did this uh, and they asked me, okay, let's see if you actually know what you're talking about uh, and they gave me to choose between um, 
uh, a couple of exams in Volkswagen Financial Services. They gave me to choose one of two exams, uh, either front-end development or back-end development. So I asked uh, which one pays the best, you know. So they told me that uh, back-end pays best, um, it, it's going to pay way better than front-end development, but it's way harder to to get the job because it's, it's harder to create like uh, what they need. So they asked me to, in order to get the job, uh, they asked me to create something called a RESTful API um, in Amazon Web Services with Python. So uh, I got 48 hours to do that and uh, I didn't know Python at the time. Uh, so I bought a course an online course and i used like the first day to learn the basics of python um, and uh, then i basically created this uh, restful api from from scratch with python uh, and thankfully there was a course basically to do just that and they asked me to create like a uh, an online an online bank to like uh, create transactions, uh, create accounts, and transaction money between accounts and stuff like that. So that was like uh, the entrance in Sam. Um, I was able to do that, and uh, from the uh, and that's how I got like uh, a job there in, in Volkswagen Financial Services. Uh, that was back in 2019, I believe. And uh, basically, if you want to get a job, you need like um, you need to build a stuff and have like proof that you can actually do the job. You know, uh, either you need to create databases, uh, move data around between databases. You know, uh, not just like uh, just doing simple queries is not enough today. So. Uh, it's basically, you know what, you need to build a tool, the tool must work. It doesn't need to be like uh, like uh, something fancy, but it must work, you know. And, and that's how I got the job, basically. Because I don't have a, like a bachelor's degree, so uh, I do have the pressure of like, uh, you know, uh, 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 I need proof that I can do the job. And that's basically it, no? Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. And um, the next question is, uh, what advice will you give the, to students? Uh, well, like uh, in general, the first one will be to convince your parents or your tutor to pay you the best, um, the best school that you may find around your country or whatever place you live. Uh, convince your parents to get you into uh, an English school so you can actually speak English fluently and listen to English fluently uh, because uh, the good money is with American companies or near shore companies or it's not in Mexico really. So if you want to earn a lot of money and get paid well for doing the same job, uh, I would suggest you to learn how to speak English and uh, com communicate with your peers. Uh, it's going to be uh, right now. Um, I am working with Mexicans, so we speak in Spanish among ourselves, but um, what most people in Carhartt, they speak English, so because they are Americans. And we do have uh, colleagues that live in India. We have a lot of people working in India, and actually they are our main competitors here in Mexico. Uh, they are basically our rivals because... Um, um, they are basically Mexicans from from Asia, so they are uh, they do generate a lot of engineers for every single uh, for every single person that graduates here, like uh, with a bachelor's degree. We have like a hundred Indians like uh, uh, graduating with honors. So they do have the numbers. They are more people coming out from universities there, but uh, most of them memorize because they are competing with each other. So uh, most of them just memorize the stuff. And uh, that's like uh, the area of the opportunity for us because if you can think for yourself and figure out the stuff that is not in a book, um, you can basically just uh, 
solve problems that they don't really know they exist. So they are really good and really fast solving issues that they already know how to solve. But if they find something new that has never been solved before, uh, so that's where we can fit in, you know, and, and figure out stuff. So my first recommendation will be you need to learn English. You need to speak English, uh, speak fluently, listen to it fluently. You need to write it. You need to read it. Uh, and most of your time is going to be solving issues, writing documentation in English, writing uh, source code in English, comments in English. You are going to be submitting commits to Git and GitHub in English. So I would recommend you to convince your parents to get you into Harmon Hall or whatever the best school is for English. And, uh, and go there with the with the mission to you know what i want to be speaking english fluently in six months or something like that you know so you are not going to be like uh going there to uh to pass an exam and call it a day your mission should be to speak english fluently because if you don't it's going to be very difficult for you to be uh hireable so it's going to be really hard for to convince somebody that you know what he doesn't speak English or she doesn't speak English one bit, uh, but she's a really good programmer. Uh, that doesn't really happen. Uh, people rather just hire somebody that they can talk to, you know. And uh, and my my bosses, my real bosses, they are Americans, so they do speak English only. They don't speak Spanish, you know. So I will I will suggest you to to learn English really well, and the second after that's done the second thing I would recommend is that you actually need to learn uh, real skills that allow you to create real products. For example, I don't know what uh, what are they teaching you in a school, but I would suggest that besides SQL. Uh, you learn how to create a database in any cloud. Uh, the main ones are AWS. Uh, after that one, I think second place is Microsoft Azure. And the third place, I think, is Google Cloud. So choose whatever cloud you want and figure out how to create a database in the cloud. That will be like your first step. And you are going to learn a lot trying to figure it out. Uh, try, there are a lot of courses online. Uh, there is LinkedIn Learning, uh, Udemy, ProSite. There is a lot of places. Even uh, YouTube is a good place to start. And I would recommend you to forget about installing MySQL in a virtual machine. Uh, forget about, because uh, uh, database sites they don't exist anymore. Everybody, every uh, company that is worth their salt is is building their infrastructure in the cloud. So it, it, it's no longer you are still managing MySQL or Oracle in a in an actual server. Uh, I think that company is not big enough, and you are not going to be. Uh, uh, as a DBA, you are not going to be spending your your time uh, making sure that the hardware is actually working. You know, so so you need to learn the cloud. You need to learn either Azure, Microsoft Azure, Amazon Web Services, or Google Cloud. So that's not um, that's not optional because most of your every single project that you are going to be working on is going to be uh, running in somebody's cloud. So you are not going to be having access to your uh, to an actual machine, if you know what I mean. Uh, so, uh, so recapitulating, uh, in, uh, summarizing, uh, learn English. Step one, learn English well, and step two, learn about the cloud technologies and how to how to make a stuff on the cloud. You know. Because you are not going to be installing MySQL, so forget about it. Well, not 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 like uh, well, you can install it in your computer if you want, but uh, in the real world, you are not going to see a server. <laughs> you know, so oh yeah, and 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 two point. Uh, do you guys already know how to work with Git? Do you know Git? 
the version control system? No? Oh my god, that's a big one. Uh, I'm going to give you like, uh, let me see, if you can Google get, uh, you can Google get and I would recommend you to visit this website. And this is GitHub. It's not the same, but I would recommend you to learn something called Git. It's a version control system. Uh, it's the most po popular and is the one that we are working on. Uh, and that's a requirement. It's not optional. So if you want to collaborate with uh, uh, a large team of developers, you are going to be required to learn how to work with Git. Um, and GitHub. GitHub is one of several websites uh, dedicated to host um, Git repositories. But at this time, I'm pretty sure you don't know what that is, so I'm going to um, share with you another link. Uh, so the first link is for GitHub, and the second link is the, is the important one. This is the Git, um, the Git website. You can download Git. And you can download the book, the ebook. Um, there is a ebook called ProGet. You can read that, or you can uh, do some research on your own on on, on YouTube. So the the, thre the three main recommendations I will give you will be learn English. Um, second, um, learn about cloud technologies, and third, you should learn about Git because. Everybody knows how to work with that, and I'm pretty sure that uh, you are not learning that in a school. So, uh, if you want to collaborate with a, a large team of developers, uh, Git is a requirement today. It's not the only one, but it's the main uh, it's the main version control system that is around. So, okay. So, next question. Thank you. What could you tell us about the, the salaries that are handled in the work area in which you are located? Well, I am located in the state of Veracruz, Mexico. So, but uh, the salaries here are very <laughs> are low income. I'm talking about like uh, uh, 10,000 pesos a month. So it's dog shit. <laughs> so it's not really good. Uh, but um, with this company I'm working on, let me see, because I do have the uh, the data here. So uh, uh, well, I do remember. I'm I'm getting paid right now. I'm getting, uh, they pay me in dollars, so every uh, 15 days is uh, is a little different because they pay me uh, with dollars. But uh, the, the, my last quincena, my last uh, paycheck was uh, uh, 18,000 pesos, 18,000 pesos quincenales, después de impuestos, after taxes. Um, but that's because uh, I'm working remote, so I'm not in sight. Uh, the main office is in Querétaro, in the city of Querétaro, uh, and I'm working from home, 100%. Uh, and uh, and I work on my own hours, you know. So it's ba after taxes will be uh, around 80,000 pesos, so 18,000 pesos quincenales. Son como casi 40,000 al mes, ¿no? Después de impuestos, after taxes. Uh, that's for data quality engineers. So I do know that data engineering engineers, they get paid even more. And I believe uh, Microsoft Azure DevOps engineer, they get paid even more. Uh, DBAs, uh, I think DBAs get paid the same that, that myself. I think DBAs, um, we only have like two DBAs, I think. And they are basically doing the job of uh, uh, 
like uh, signing in users, creating new users, providing credentials, providing permission for tables. Uh, that's basically the job of a DBA, you know. Uh, it's the guy or gal that has the keys to the database or databases. Uh, so they decide, uh, they provide credentials to the database so we can uh, query the database or create tables and so forth, you know. So they are the gatekeepers for the data in the company. That's the job of the database administration, uh, the, DB, the DBA. Um, uh, other than that, they don't do uh, development work. They don't actually, uh, they run scripts, they do run scripts, uh, but it's more like a, a DDL, uh, more like a data definition language, uh, commands and scripts. Which is basically, you know what, uh, this is a new user, I need him or her to access this table or these tables, because uh, they could be several tables. So the DBA, okay, um, who is authorizing this? Okay, um, it's authorized by this guy. Uh, okay, let me, and they actually write the scripts or run the scripts to provide credentials to, uh, and permissions to the new users, for example. Or maybe they need to create a new table and uh, a new developer needs access to the database to create uh, a new table and, and add columns and whatnot. So they uh, provide these permissions. Uh, and they do manage permissions for all environments because we, do, we don't have like a single database. We have several databases with different environments. Uh, an environment is like a... Uh, we have a development environment, which is a copy of the database where developers do their work. You know, they create tables, they delete tables, they do like the development work there. When they finish developing the database uh, code, they move that code into another environment called um, uh, QA. That's uh, quality assurance, where we do some testing there. And if the test passes, uh, then we move the code to another environment called user accepting test or UAT. That's another environment where where final users get that uh, they get to try uh, the new software that we are developing. And if they uh, they accept that, then we move that from user accepting test to production environment. If something goes wrong along the way. Um, me and other people in data quality, we we are monitoring data, we are monitoring processes inside the database, and if something goes wrong, uh, we report back to the development team, and we roll back some changes if necessary. So, as you can see, it's not like uh, the DBA is this person that do, does all the work. Uh, there is a lot of people doing a lot of different things, and everything is related to databases. Uh, but we have different responsibilities. So it's not like, uh, unless you are like uh, part of a company that is very small, uh, probably you are not going to you are not going to be doing everything. You know. So some people do development. Some people do uh, DBA stuff. Some people do uh, DevOps. Um, and, and I do data quality, and other people do uh, reporting, for example, what we know as uh, business intelligence, which is basically uh, data analytics and reporting. So I don't know if you are learning about data analytics or, or data science, data science or analysis or ETL, I don't know if you guys know how to move data from from data sources into a master database. Uh, do you know what ETL is? No. Ex extract, transform, and load? No. They don't teach you that yet? No. Oh my God. <laughs> well, that's a big one. Uh, that's another job. Being a, uh, that's the main job of the data engineers. So data engineers are the people that build the pipelines or the roads to where data is going to be traveling. Uh, in the case of our company, Carhartt, they do have a lot of uh, uh, a lot of stores. They have a lot of uh, main offices around the world, uh, and they are selling clothes around the world. So. 
uh, including Amazon. So we gather data from Amazon, from online retail stores, and from our own retail stores. And we gather all that sales data, and we send everything to Microsoft Azure, where the data engineering team is going to be uh, the ones that gather all the data, and they store everything into a master database that we call uh, the EDW, which means um, Enterprise Data Warehouse, where, where everything is stored. And then everybody, like uh, business intelligence people, data analytics people, and data science people, they work with that data and they transform it into something else, you know, like they use like for reports and everything else. So we all know SQL, but we do different things. So that's basically uh, how it works here. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that will be all. Thank you for the interview and the, yeah, sure. for the advice. And the, it's all. Thank you. Okay. So have a nice day then. Take care and good luck with your uh, with your homework. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. See you later. You. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye. Night time. Yeah. Hice la buena obra del día. Curiosamente, yo tengo, claro, tenía que estar viendo waifus. Sí, a ver, entrevista a un DBA. <ríe> güey, ¿cuántas llevo, cabrón? A ver, aquí, esta fue la primera, creo, hace dos años. No, güey, tiene más. Oh, por Dios. A ver, mira, tengo una, tengo dos, otra, eh, en ese mismo año, pero es otro equipo de personas. Tengo tres, cuatro, cinco, güey. La última fue el del año pasado, el 2023. Esta sería el 2022, güey. ¿No? Entonces, ya tengo, ya tengo entrevista a un DBA, ¿no? Ya, ya es la, la... ¿Cuántas llevo? Una, dos, tres, cuatro y cinco. Cinco entrevistas. Sería la sexta, güey. La sexta entrevista de... Entrevista un DBA, güey. Las estoy coleccionando, güey. Vamos a ver. Uh, hasta el primer job uh, at this uh, RedFull API, bro. Ah, so el micrófono está culero, güey. Hubiera puesto el otro, pero bueno. All right. Sí, es que este es el micrófono que uso para el VR chat. Ni pedo. Bueno, fue divertido. Y ya hice la buena obra del día. Y no, no les enseñan Git, güey. No les enseñan lo importante. No les enseñan inglés. No les enseñan Git. No les enseñan... Este, ¿cómo se llama? No les enseñan inglés, no les enseñan Git, no les enseñan la nube, güey. Entonces, yo creo que estamos todavía muy atrasados en, desde el punto de vista educativo. Ahí está, a ver. Open to Word, ya te corrieron, amiga. No, si la reclutadora ya no tiene trabajo, vale madre. Oh, por Dios, no, mira, hablando del rey de Roma, yo creo que me escuchó hablando la computadora y dijo, hola, de Volkswagen México, te ha invitado a suscribirte a ah, Bienvenido Volkswagen Lover. Sí, voy a aceptar, ¿por qué no? Y está toda, güey, aquí está toda la flota, ¿verdad? A ver, ¿cuánto va que voy a ver gente aquí con la que ya trabajé, güey? A ver, o quién sabe si sigan ahí, ¿eh? ¿Quién sabe, verdad? Uh, me he suscrito. No, pero este es un grupito así como genérico de Volkswagen. No creo que sea de Volkswagen Financial Services. Maximilian Schwarzmüller. Maximilian Schwarzmüller. Esto es un alemán de allá, güey. Uh, publicado nueva oportunidad de empleo. Helldesk. Guacala, Helldesk. Uh -huh. He aparecido en 11 búsquedas esta semana, güey. A ver. Pero no... ¿Quién me ha buscado? ¿Qué? Técnico de selección de personal. Ah, los que me buscan más, obviamente, son técnicos de selección de personal. Obvio, güey. Uh -huh. 
ya debería este, meterle más cosas a mi LinkedIn, güey. Desde que empecé a trabajar aquí, me ha valido madre, güey. Mira, Shakira me quiere reclutar para su empresa, güey. ¿Eh? ¿Qué tal? Es una Shakira, güey. Se parece un chingo. Xiomara. Hasta tiene un nombre así. A ver. ¿De dónde eres? Atlanta, Georgia, Estados Unidos. Yo creí que era latina, güey. Mira, la discriminé por el nombre. A ver. Es reclutadora. Ok. No, no estoy buscando una nueva oportunidad laboral, güey. Ya. Estoy feliz donde ando. Mm. No hay nada ahí, ya entendí Porque son lentes de realidad aumentada güey. No mames <risa> Oh por Dios Bueno, anyway Ya hice mi Tarea de ¿Cómo se llama? Mi, mi buena obra del día güey. No Este, vamos a subirlo de hecho Oh, what? Se quitó tu video debido a una solicitud de eliminación por incumplimiento de derechos de autor. Ok. Revisar detalles, supongo. Ajá. Obtener información. Ajá, ¿y qué video es? ¿Aprendiendo Python? Ah, creo que ya sé por qué. Uh, cero tu mastery. Sí, porque creo que estuve... Poniendo ahí el curso de, de Python y ya, mamadas. Pero no puedo hacer nada, ¿no? No sé para qué me ponen esto. Bueno. Este, de hecho, empecé a grabar tarde, güey, no... Sí, se me 